Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in our last episode, we talked about motors and controllers. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to connect the motor to the transmission and, and mount it in the vehicle. And so today's episode's about adapters, couplers, and motor mounts. What I call an adapter is a component that allows you to mate the electric motor to your stock bell housing on your transmission. Now, that can be a one-piece component or two-piece component. Um, I don't know, maybe some people will make it out of three, but typically we will either use an adapter plate and a spacer ring or just one piece. Uh, we typically use billeted aluminum and uh, they're made in a CNC. But as with most things, there's more than one way to skin a cat. The example I'm going to show today is actually a cast aluminum piece. Now, one side has to fit the motor profile. So in other words, there's a little raised portion right here on the motor. This ID here has to fit over that. And then of course we have location here for our mounting bolts, which correspond with the ones on the face of the motor. So in this case, it's going to fit on something like this, and I'm just setting it on there for right now. And this then allows us to bolt the motor to the bell housing. Now, it's not quite that simple. We have to be able to be able to connect the output shaft on the motor. We have to couple that to the input shaft on the transmission. Now, you can do that um, directly without a clutch, or you can do it using a clutch. Now, everything that ev for you does incorporates a clutch or direct drive, but we don't do direct to the transmission. So when I say direct drive, that means it's going through a differential or a gear set that then goes to the rear wheels and it's all electric. But when using the existing transmission, which is done most of the time on the conversions that we have done, we will then use a clutch. So we have to have a way to couple the output shaft from the motor to the flywheel. And that's what this is. This is what we call a coupler. So this has the ability to fit on the shaft. And this one is what we call an interference fit. In other words, it won't just slide on that shaft we're going to have to heat this up to expand it and then slide it on the shaft. And once it's on the shaft, it'll cool down and help hold itself in place. There's also a Woodruff key that goes in here and there's a corresponding groove in our coupler for that key also, as well as a, um, a, some uh, lockdowns, some Allen head screws to help hold this in place to make sure it would never walk out. And an interference fit like this should never move anyway. Okay? So, the critical part in all of this, there's a few things. Now, we have to have proper relationship between components. 
So when you remove the internal combustion engine from the vehicle, you'll notice that the flywheel fits back into your bell housing. We need to mimic that exactly. So the distance, once we install this adapter, the distance from this mating edge, the mating edge to the uh, bell housing, to that edge of the flywheel, which I'll show you a different angle in a moment. That has to perfectly replicate the original internal combustion setup. So this adapter has to be a certain thickness as well as your coupler so that when all of this is assembled, it comes out to mimic that internal combustion setup exactly. Okay. That reading between the mating surface and the flywheel is what Michael Brown quoted as being the magic number because that's the specification that needs to be um, duplicated. Now, a couple other things. When making your adapter, you have to make sure that the alignment between your motor and your transmission, you know, shaft to shaft, is exact. It can't be off. If it's off, you'll have a problem and uh, misalignment and have some problems. By the same token, your coupler needs to have perfect alignment and it needs to be balanced. So when it's spinning, it doesn't create any vibration. As well as your flywheel and your clutch components, it all needs to be balanced. So the adapter makes the motor to the bell housing and you have an alignment and spacing that are very important. The coupler connects the motor shaft to the transmission shaft. And again, you have spacing and balance that are very important. Now, one thing we haven't talked about are the motor mounts. Now, the motor, when it's in the vehicle, has to be supported in a couple fashions. One is we have to support it due to gravity. It won't just levitate in the engine compartment. So we have to be able to support the weight of the motor and we also have to support it from torque. So as this motor wants to turn, there's going to be an equal and opposite force in the other direction. So if it's turning this way, the shaft, the body of this motor is going to want to turn in the opposite direction. So we have to be able to secure the motor from not only the weight, but from torque. And we'll talk a little bit about all this a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put the adapter on here and I'm going to put the coupler on and we'll attach the flywheel and I'll give you another view of what we're talking about by that magic number. Now, in most instances, we will attach the coupler first. And the reason for that is, is that if I were to attach the adapter first, now it's gonna be difficult to get in there and tighten those set screws, so forth. So, sequentially, you want to put the adapter on first, I mean the coupler on first, and then the adapter. So, uh, I'll be right back after I do that. So here we have the coupler installed on the motor shaft. Now, I always recommend that if you can, and that was what was uh, easy about a DC setup, is you can hook it to a 12 volt battery and spin up the motor. Uh, with an AC setup, it's a little more complicated. So, we typically take these components 
to a, a shop where they spin balance everything, make sure everything's balanced. But you can check things, you know, on a motor such as this DC one right here. I can spin it up and make sure there's no vibrations. So once we have this in place, then we can install the adapter. And on a lot of setups, there will be, you know, a top. So you want to pay attention to that and make sure that you get things oriented correctly. So when you remove the internal combustion engine from the vehicle, that dimension that we were talking about, that magic number, is from this mating face here to this face here. Okay, the clutch mounts here. This is the face that mates to the clutch. So the distance between here, the mating surf surface to the bell housing, to there. So you take a caliper and you would just simply take a reading. And we usually rotate the, uh, the flywheel take multiple readings that way, take multiple readings around, and make sure that we have a, a, a number that is accurate, not just based on one reading in one spot. Also, like I mentioned when we put the coupler on, if possible, spin it up, check for vibration, same way as when we put the flywheel on, we'll spin it up, check for vibration. Once the clutch is installed, we run it up and check for vibration to make sure everything is, is true and vibration free. You can look at the shaft as it's running and if it's a little off, you'll see that. It should be just centered. Fortunately today, there are a lot more adapters and couplers available off the shelf. Um, there are quite a few companies that are uh, manufacturing these for a variety of vehicles. Now, there are you know, vehicles that are uh, not commonly converted and you will find, you know, uh, you, won't, you won't find adapters and couplers off the shelf for those and you'll have to have one made. So I recommend you know, that you go with somebody that has the ability, the knowledge, the expertise to do the design work and, and or the machining and, and create your components. Canadian Electric Vehicles has a large selection of adapters, couplers, uh, for a large selection of vehicles, probably the largest selection that I'm aware of. And we have used their uh, components on occasion. So what I'm going to do next is just show you some slides of some different motor mounting setups, but just to give you some ideas. classic uh, VWs and some of the real early Porsches is that they don't use motor mounts on the engine. The motor mounts are only on the transaxle and you bolt this directly to the transaxle and no additional accommodation is necessary. So uh, they're easier to do in that regard. You don't have to create some kind of uh, mounting setup. Now. Things to remember with the motor mounts. Like I said, you know, we gotta deal with the weight of the motor, we gotta deal with the torque, but we also want to have a shock mount setup, a vibration-free setup. 
even if this is running nice and true, that motor spinning and that connection, if it were rigid, from the transmission and drivetrain through the motor to your frame or chassis would be noticeable. So you want to have a shock mounted setup. We typically use the original uh, mounts from the original engine setup when possible. Now some exceptions to that are like what's used on the, uh, the Porsche uh, 924s and 944s. We come up with something different on that. But a lot of vehicles you can use the stock mounts and then we just come up with a custom cradle or connection to the motor. And, but we use this stock mounting point to the chassis or frame and the stock shock mounts because that's something that's you know off the shelf uh, as far as availability. This week's recommendation is that unless you know what you're doing, have the proper tools and expertise, that you have somebody else do your adapter coupling for you. In next week's episode, we're going to talk about throttle controls. And as always, I thank you for watching. If you're interested in our videos, subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, please don't leave them on the YouTube channel because the people that monitor that don't have the answers. It's office staff, they don't have the answers. So if you want to leave a comment or question, especially when it comes to questions, email us at info at ev4unow.com. We'll be happy to answer your questions. See you next time.